so uh, I just watched a video called Thank a Hero. Um, it really brought back a flashback for me. And uh, I wanted to bring this confession where this is more of like a healing project for myself as I get, you know, events out of my life that I don't really talk about. Um, for many reasons. And uh, it's just like a lot of people just don't believe you. And the reactions and the things that I deal with afterwards are not worth it, especially that I travel so much. And, like, a lot of this stuff, you know, it really doesn't get publicized. You'd be surprised what happens in the world. So, uh, after watching I Think the Hero Project, um, I really wanted to talk about a life experience of mine. It really changed me, too. Um, and it, I guess you could call it kind of compound. Uh, but uh, I'm going to go strictly to uh, me being in Sacramento on um, a couple years ago. Spent uh, some time in Sacramento where I was renovating a Marriott, working out of a friend's company, helping him out. And when I was in Sacramento and getting paid minimum wage... Uh, Luckily, you know, place to live, place to work. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. And, uh, you know, I have no really thing, nothing that holds me into one place. But uh, to get to my story and to thank the Hero Project, uh, I got out of work early one day and uh, grabbed my guitar, walking to a, a friend's place that I met. Well, I was there, and he let me play guitar and practice in front of his store, where a couple of artists would gather around, and they'd, you know, they jam out. And that's where I really learned to jam and to start vibing out more, and really felt lucky that, you know, people fed up, like, they just dealt with me. So uh, walking down to uh, my buddy's store to go play guitar after getting out of work early, I ended up uh, walking to this intersection. When I got to this intersection, um, I saw the like out of the corner of my eye. I just you know it's one of those things that it was happening, but you don't really pay attention to, but you notice. I see the light turning and it went from yellow to uh, red and then I see this car is now slowing down and I'm just like, oh fuck, please stop or please don't turn. And then I see this van just turn or turning, making a left hand turn in this car that doesn't pay or they're running a red light and uh, hits the van, hits the van and the van rolls over over the car and flies in the air and i'm just like holy fuck and like it, it rolled like three four times um after rolling and falling down and it was facing towards me so the bottom of the van was facing towards me and um i ended up you know taking out my, my headphones i'm like please just don't have the gas lines or the engine block and that's where i hit it was the engine block don't let the engine block be be leaking and spark plug like i'm just like please no no ignition fire ignition and that's like you know worst case scenario um my, i have a lot of mechanic training as a kid i grew up um learning how to fix cars or fix my own car because my dad which was a great skill to learn but that wasn't my luck. Um, all I heard was the click, 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 click of the ignition going. So, um, I really don't talk about the story very often. I, it's, it's interesting how, like, when you put yourself in this situation and then you don't really have any, I don't know. It, but anyways, uh, I start picking up speed and I'm like, please don't ignite, please don't ignite. No, but then I hear like an ignition happen. Um, you hear a gas ignite, it makes like a flare sound. And uh, then it's like, fuck, I run to the corner and I drop my guitar. I'm like just begging to God that no one steals my guitar. And I run over to the van. And as I run over to the van, I look and I see the window and I, I point up to, I see the guy over there. 
and I see, I'm just like, you know, praying there's, there's only one person in there. And, uh, I see a guy hanging over and I see a guy that's, uh, in the driver's side. So he's, you know, in a full size van driver's side on the side of it. And he's just hanging off of his seatbelt. And I, I look at it and I'm like, I just point out, I'm like, make sure the door's unlocked, like door unlocked so I can go and help him out as quick as possible. As I quickly assess that, assess that, you know, the damage might be at the door, but I wasn't, it looked like it was just, she, like, he got hit right on the engine block, which was probably the best case scenario of being hit and where to take most of the impact. Uh, but then I just, you know, judged it quickly, jumped up, pulled myself up onto the, the, the side of the van where, Luckily, I don't think there was any windows. I don't really remember that part about it, but like I go and then I, I get to to the door. You know, I, I left the door right open. I go, you know, hop right down and I just go, I tell him to grab my arm and I'm start start coaching him through the situation. Start telling him, I tell him, can you, un I ask him, can you unbuckle the seatbelt? He's like, no, I can't. I'm like, okay, well, can you leverage yourself in any way possible, I'm like, are you hurt? First of all, well, that's the biggest thing. And, you know, and, and, you know, he did respond, no, whiplash is an issue, though. And you really have to worry about the the car's on fire. So he's got to get out of there ASAP, no matter what. And I don't have anything to take out, take the fire out right now. And that's automatic response is fire is number one problem. And he wasn't hurt, which was luckily enough. And I, I didn't have to think of another plan. But, you know, I ended up, he grabbed my arm, started using me as his leverage point, and uh, ended up using his leg against the wheel, wheel well and leveraging himself enough pressure to and go with the seatbelt. But before that happened, I'm just thinking in my head, and this has been messing with me for so long. I'm like, because it was taking some time, and I heard from a guy over in the corner, he's like, like, Knife, knife, can we get a knife? I'm like, yes, a knife so I can cut the seatbelt would be a great idea. But like, what else could I do just in case those situations and help out and automatic my head? And I think the big picture, I'm like, I'm going to have to jump in. I'm a skinny motherfucker, which luckily enough, the guy was a little bit big, uh, older black gentleman. And uh, and like, I hate even saying that because of the racial issues, because that doesn't even fucking matter. It's a human life. Uh and I could have slept in right in between, you know, got my shoulder in there, popped it up there, and worst case scenario, helped him crawl out or whirled him in my my other exit strategies. And uh, right when I made that decision, like, all right, like, if he takes another second, like, all right, I'm jumping in. Right when I made that decision, the seatbelt came undone. And in my mind, I can't explain it, but it was just like, thank God, because I didn't have to, you know, risk my life to that point. And all the time I heard back, like, it's going to be okay. Don't worry about it. Just be there and do the thing that you know that you can do. And you have all this training. And I do. So I was, you know, right place, right scenario. The guy, I ended up, you know, lifting him. It was probably about like 200 something pounds with my arm and my shoulder. And I, I pulled him up. And I pulled him up over and I got him. Like, it was, this was really interesting too. Like, you know, he was using his legs a little bit, but... Using my arm, I pulled him over, and there was a sea of hands, a good, like, 12, 20 people, I don't know, but they just got him, and they just floated him down to the ground, helping him out. Someone, someone asked me if I needed help. I just jumped down, but, like, you know, being my mid-20s in, like, good shape anyways, it's just, like, whatever. Well, irony is I didn't, like, luckily I didn't wear my iconic jacket where it has an angel wing on it. But, uh... I jump down and I walk over and somebody's giving me, a, you know, a rusted fire extinguisher. I'm looking at, I'm looking for the, the expiration dates and I'm like, I don't want to spray it. It looks too old and then, you know, it's a chemical file fire too. I, I would rather have the professional too. Some guy's talking shit in my corner. I'm like, all right, I'm right in. I'm like, I find out it's dry chemical. I'm like, all right, like I can go through it. I go, I start spraying it. The guy's talking more shit in my store. I'm like, it's not going out. I'm having some issues with it. And like, I'm not fully comfortable anyways in the situation because it is old. So I'm like, I, I, I it is what it is. And, uh, you know, a couple of minutes later, uh, the car's totaled, uh, completely total. I don't know what's good in the inside of it, but like, I, I, I didn't see that it would be a big difference if the, the, you know, the, when the, you know, the professionals got there that are trained in the situation. 
So uh, what happened was they got there and I mean a couple minutes. Like it was, you know, don't get me wrong. I, I, funny enough, like there was a fire station right down the street and it took him about, you know, probably two minutes to get there. Maybe. I don't know. And they put the fire right out, which was great. I was just worried that, it, you know, it could have gone there. I had a family friend that uh, died in a, a car fire. So like that, that was all I conscious too. So um, I ended up helping the guy, bringing him over to the corner by, uh, and this is Sac in Sacramento, California. I'll bring him to the Burger King. And uh, it was funny. I really just went and grabbed my guitar case, quickly talked to, you know, the fireman and, you know, asked me if I needed to be there. He's like, no, you don't have to be here. I'm like, are you sure? Like, I don't mind talking to people and whatnot. Like, let me know if I need to deal with any of that stuff. Let me know if I need to deal with media or whatnot. Like, like, no, don't worry. I'm like, are you sure? I'm like, great. I, I didn't want to be one of those fucking people. If that makes sense. I, I work in entertainment. Um, I'm working on a lot of, a lot of things personally. And uh, I deal with my own problems. So I, I just like, I was the best trained person and I was trained to actually do what I did. So th that was no issue. But uh, not to have anybody to talk to or to relay my experience with because I've been traveling so much, it really, really tore into me. And uh, it is what it is. I'm happy to have that experience as a professional. And I'm happy that I actually got to rescue a guy that needed my help in the situation. And lucky enough that, you know, he wasn't severely hurt. So, like, that was the, like, I don't know exactly what happened wise, but, like, you know, he he felt blessed that I was there. And that, that was the biggest thing. And that's the biggest thing about anything about helping out anybody. It's, like, you got to be selfless. So, like, I'm just hoping that guy's okay. And, you know, I've never heard from him since. You know, didn't exchange any information from anybody there. Didn't exchange information from the, the fire officers, um, I'll be talking about another experience soon, but this is just the one that just popped in my head, uh, I don't ask for these moments, but it's part of my life, so this is just my confession, uh, about, uh, the Sacramento car crash, um, in Stockton Boulevard, which, like, I can't even remember the date, but it was, you know, probably, like, a year and a half ago, two years ago. Um, you know, be a hero, think a hero, honor a hero, you know, it doesn't matter. A mentor, anybody can be a hero. You can be a hero in a moment. You can change somebody's life just with the words and say, just a smile. And that's one thing about it. Inviting somebody to an event. Um, doing something special to make their day. Those are heroes. No matter how small or how big. So, um, that's just one of my uh, one of my stories. And it's, it's really hard to talk about. Um, so, uh, you know, thank you, hero.